everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this super cute and super tiny little jellyfish keyring. Now these guys are very fast to make from start to finish. You're looking at about 20, 25 minutes to the full completed jelly. So they are awesome if you are a last minute gift giving or looking for little pocket money makes for your craft fair. If this is your first visit to my channel, it would be amazing if you took a moment to just hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Now I showed this little chap on my social media and um, my daughter asked me to make her a mustard colour jellyfish backpack keyring and um, he kind of exploded and everybody wanted to know how to make him. He's a miniature version of my big chunky rainbow jelly which I will link to in the description box below. But so many of you asked for the pattern for this little chap so let's jump straight in to what you're going to need. Okay materials you're going to need to make your little tiny jellyfish keyring friend. You're going to need some keyring blanks. Now you can pick these up dirt cheap from Amazon, eBay, any sort of place like that. You can just pick up an absolute ton of them for not very much money at all. You're going to need some six millimeter safety eyes, a large eye needle. Now, ideally, you want a large eye needle that will pass through the chain link. You're going to need a tiny scrap of black for the little tiny mouth, a pair of scissors, a three millimeter crochet hook or hook appropriate for your choice of yarn. Go down a hook size from what is recommended on the ball band. You're going to need some stuffing and the yarn I personally am using is Lolly by Debbie Bliss. Now I believe this yarn has been long since discontinued. I stocked up on this a couple of years ago now when I saw that, you know, they were they made an announcement that Debbie Bliss was no longer going to be selling yarn. So I have no idea if you can still get this anymore. I stocked up in a whole host of colours of it, as you can see. But you can use any yarn that you so wish. So without any further ado, let's begin. Okay, to start, you want to leave yourself a long tail. Now, I'm that's about sort of uh, 10, 12 inches of yarn. So you want to have that as excess. And then we're going to start with a magic ring. Now, if you don't know how to do a magic ring, I do have a video on how to do just that. A little card will have popped up or there will be links in the description box below. So into your magic ring, you're going to place six single crochet. Then you're gonna pull your magic ring tight. Now, normally this tail would be on the inside of your work, but we want it on the outside. So bring that tail to the front of your work. And for the next round, we're going to do an increase. So into this very first single crochet of round one, we are going to place two single crochet. And then you're going to place two single crochet into the five remaining stitches of the round. So at the end of round two, you will have 12 single crochet. So you'll have 12 single crochet and the tail from your magic ring will be poking out the front of your work. For round three, start with a single crochet in your first stitch, then an increase in your next and it increases two single crochet in the same stitch. Now you're going to repeat this five more times around single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase, all the way around. And at the end of round three, you'll have 18 stitches. So 
So you'll have 18 stitches for round three. And now for round four, we're going to place a single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet into that next stitch, then increase in that third stitch. And you're going to repeat that all the way around. So single crochet, single crochet, increase, single, single, increase, all the way around. And at the end of this round, you will have 24 stitches. Okay, once you have your 24 stitches, pull up a loop and grab a stitch marker or your scrap of black yarn, whatever you have to hand. She says, looking for a stitch marker. <laughs> okay, I found one. Pop it in that loop so it won't come off because we're just gonna take a moment to attach the keyring blank before we go too much further. So grab your keyring blank and your large eye needle and take your tail from your magic circle and you're going to pass it through the chain link or if you've just got a normal circle without this little fancy bit on the end just through there so you've threaded it on and we're going to take this and we're going to pop it through the center of that magic circle Then you want to pop up by another stitch on your first round and pass it through that center bit and then out by another stitch. So I came up here and I'm going back in over here. You're free to run the thread through as many times as you like. I find that with this yarn, it's quite a sort of stretchy firm yarn that a couple of passes is fine. So on the underside of the work, I'm just gonna pick up a loop of a stitch, any one, and I'm just gonna make a couple of knots just to secure that down on that side. Then once you're happy, pass this back up through any of the little stitches on that first round so it's back on the outside of your work again. So you secured this to your work and you've brought that tail back to the outside. You can pop your loop back on your hook. And now for rounds five, six, seven and eight, you are just going to put one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So 24 single crochet. I want four rows of 24 single crochet stitches. So just one single crochet in each for four rounds. All right, so your little fella should be looking something like this by the end of round eight. So you've just done four rounds of just 24 stitches in each. Now for round nine, we're going to be working into the back loop only so if you look at your stitch normally you place your hook under both loops but for this one we're going into the back loop only so you're just picking up that very back loop so for round nine you're going to do 24 stitches just as you have been doing but in the back loop only so just picking up that back loop Okay, so you've got this little ridge line running along. Lift your loop up, pop in a stitch marker or anything like that, just stop that loop from disappearing. Now where this little ridge meets, this is the back of your jellyfish. So you want to flip him around so that you have the front of him facing you. So that loop will be at the back. Now we're gonna add his little eyes and embroider his mouth. So grab your six millimeter safety eyes so you're going to place your eyes. This is the ridge line of that row that we just did. You're going to place them in this 
row just one up from there so pop an eye in on one side then you are going to count see these center holes in of your stitches you want four of those in the middle so one two three four and then you're going to pop the eye in to the next one hopefully if i stretch it out a little bit you can see one two three four so you've got the spacing then you can go ahead and pop the backs on now for these six mil eyes these backs are tricky and annoying <laughs> they're quite hard to push on weirdly so you want to push them till they click so you've got the little eyes sitting on this row above the one you have just done then grab your scrap of black and your large eye needle oh mine is still attached to the tail now with regards to how you want the mouth to look it is totally up to you i have a couple of different types this white one has a slightly larger mouth than this little yellow one for instance so it's totally up to you how wide you want the little smile to be but you want it in line on the same row as your eyes so bring up your needle about here leave some black hanging out the back pop it in a stitch or two further over like that and then you want to bring your needle in the middle just above oh sorry just above those front loops of the row you've just done so you want to come back up through that point come underneath the loop of the smile and go back into the exact same place and you want to secure it all down Make sure you're happy with his little smile here we go it's a little bit wonky but that'll do then you want to knot it on the inside trim those yarn ends so he's got his little face he's got his little eyes pop your loop back on your hook Now for this round, we're going to be going back under both loops. So normal crocheting for this round. We're going to place a single crochet in the first stitch. Single crochet in the next stitch. And then we're going to do an invisible decrease over the next two stitches. Now an invisible decrease is you pick up the front loop of the first stitch and the front loop of the second stitch and do your single crochet through both so i'll show you again i'm going to do a single crochet single crochet then invisible decrease oops So do that all the way around and by the end of this round you'll have 18 stitches all right for the next round you're going to do single crochet invisible decrease single crochet invisible decrease Single crochet, invisible decrease all the way around and you'll have 12 stitches remaining or in total, sorry. Okay, so that's my 12th stitch. Pull up a loop, pop your stitch marker back on just to stop that loop from dropping off and grab your stuffing now you don't need very much at all for this little chap he's tiny now when you stuff this little guy 
you want to try and keep the bottom from this ridge if you tuck it up you can see it's flat so you want to only really stuff the dome of his head so just with a tiny little bit of stuffing just pop it in and you just really want to be shaping the dome of his head he's only diddy so you don't need to go too mad you don't want to stretch your stitches because he's only a little key ring after all. Let's give him a little gentle shape. Make sure where his eyes are, they're sitting in line. There you go. So you can see I've barely put any in him. That's absolutely fine because I want the bottom to be as flat as possible. So for the final round, you're going to do an invisible decrease six times so you'll end with six stitches okay so that is your final crochet stitch for your jellyfish so cut yourself again a nice long tail because you're going to need this for sewing and to be part of the tendrils. So let me trim that off. So you can see, if you just then pull your hook out, I've got a nice long tail for this section and I've got a nice long tail coming out the top of his head. So you're just gonna leave him like that for a moment and we're going to make a couple of little simple tendrils. So with the yarn colour that you've been using for the body of your jellyfish, pop a slip knot on your hook and chain 45. Once you've got 45, leave yourself a long end. We'll trim all these up afterwards. Pull that loop through, pull it tight. And then repeat that one more time with a new piece of yarn for the second tendril. So chain 45. Okay, so you've got your two chain lengths of 45 and your jelly over here. Now it's for some really quick, simple assembly. So grab your large eye needle and one of your tendrils and thread an end onto your needle. Now I find this a bit easier to do before we sew up this base because it's less likely to get caught in the stuffing. So you can sort of pull it up slightly. So you're gonna pop in between one of your stitches on one side and come out on the other side you're going to pull that chain now it's going to have a bit of resistance and you're probably going to bring some stuffing through don't worry pull that through to about the halfway mark if stuffing comes through with it pull it back the other way and that stuffing will disappear back into the body so that's two tendrils in place and then with your second we're going to go across in the opposite direction. So we've just attached these this way. So now we're going to attach the second that way. And again, pull it through. If it brings stuffing, don't worry, pull it back the other way. Now they don't have to be even lengths. If they're uneven, it's a bit better. So now those are roughly in place. Grab the yarn end from your crochet body. I'm aware there's a lot of yarn ends going on, so I hope you're all keeping up with what's being sewn where. Now you're going to run your needle around the outside of these six single crochet stitches you did of the very last round. So I'm just running it through the outside loops of those stitches to cinch up that center 
hole. So if you pull it tight, they'll all close together. Now to help with this shaping, because you can see sort of ball shaped at the moment, pop your hook in the center of those stitches and bring it right up and out by the top of his head. Now ideally you want to be coming out in between some stitches like here. So I'm pulling this through and I'm pulling it and as I pull it up, it's going to bring his little body into more of a sort of jellyfish shape. I'm going to put my thumb there for a second. And then if you want to do another secure through your chain up the top here, you can, but you don't have to. It's absolutely just totally optional at this point. And then you want to come back down through that same stitch and pop out anywhere underneath him. Now, when you're pulling this stitch down, try not to pull it too tightly because you don't want to misshape his head. We just want it to hold the center section up a tiny bit. Once you're happy, do a little tiny, tiny knot just around one of the stitches, just to hold that in place. I might do a second little knot there actually whilst I'm here. Bit of safe and sorry. And then we can just take your needle off. Then with this long tail that is coming from his head, thread this one up and this is the tail we're going to use to secure his tendrils in place so they can't be pulled out. So you're going to bring this one down and out at the bottom. Just like before, be careful when you're pulling it down because you don't want to pull his head wildly out of shape. You just want a little loose that's hidden in there. And now what you're going to do is, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So this is my one here. You're going to catch a bottom chain of each one of these tendrils, just so, because obviously if you pull this, it's going to come straight out. So we just need to secure them all with a stitch. So I'm going to just disappear in here and come up by one of my tendrils over here. And I'm going to pop my needle just through one of those chains. So I'm just going straight through the center of that tendril and back into that stitch. And I'm gonna do the same on this one. So I'm coming up and I'm catching it. So that's that one secured. That one secured. Come up over by this one. So you can see now that's not gonna come out because we've just popped a stitch in. So again, come out by the last one over here. And then bring that up through the center. Now, if you want to be super secure, you can knot this one. And then it's just a case of lay him down and trim his tendrils however long or short you want them to be. So you can just shape them. I like mine to be at a sort of angle, like that. And you're done. See, that was super quick, even with me talking you through every single step. So after a while, when you get into the rhythm or you get into a little factory production of these chaps, like I said in the intro, 20, 25 minutes and you'll be churning these little fellas out. So it would be amazing if you would share this video with somebody else who you think may enjoy making little keyring jellyfish friends. As always, I love receiving comments, so let me know what you think of these little chaps down in the comments section below. And I hope you enjoy crocheting your little 
jelly key rings. So until next time, bye!